Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Fish of Hex. My name is Travis. Today we're going to be doing a quick email Q&A. And for those of you who are new to the channel, this is where I sit down and answer your guys' questions that you send to fishofhex at gmail.com. And of course, there is some background noise. I didn't turn anything off. Printers are going ham in the back. And uh, so you might hear some weird beeps and stuff, but uh, nothing out of the ordinary. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, our first question is, hi, I'm starting a new tank. Can I use used dry rock from a previous system? Uh, the answer to that is yes and no. Yes, if you know what happened to that system. Um, are you the previous owner? I'm assuming you are. Are you, or, or are you buying it from somebody else? Uh, what you need to know is what happened to that rock when it was in the previous system? Did that person dump copper in the tank? Did they add any weird medications? Did they have a ton of algae all over the place? You got to know these things because all that stuff, it's going to be in that rock. The rock is just a giant sponge. And if, if a tank had issues or the tank was up for 10, 15 years, you don't want to use that rock. Ask me how I know. Just go ahead and ask me. <laughs> One of my first tanks, I used dry rock from a system that was, what, 15 years old? Something like that. It was pretty, it was pretty old. Between 10 and 18 years old. Something crazy like that. And um, it was a disaster. I mean, the rock was dirty. Um, I even attempted to cure it. Didn't work out that well, and uh, it's just still al algae everywhere. It was it was bad. It was real, real bad. And um, yeah, lesson learned on that. So if you're gonna use used dry rock from a previous system, make sure it was well taken care of, and make sure that you cure that rock regardless. That means putting it in a separate container like a brute trash can, curing it for a couple months, making sure that uh, it's you know there's all the excess nutrients and stuff are out during water changes and taken care of, and the rock is good to go before putting it in your system so uh yeah let's go to move on to the next question okay next one what's up travis i have a 50 gallon low boy grow out system in my garage i have pucani aquascaped well established and covered in coralline inside of it along with many frags and colonies when i build my dream display later this year my plan is to transfer over all the rock work and colonies my new display will be tied into the frag tank through the wall so it'll be an expanded system with that out of the way my question is i have a son of a bitch vermented snails in my low boy i've tried to snap them and see them but uh they've multiplied should i use new rock in the display question mark or just transfer it over question mark uh i've watched your channel and know you have a video on these guys already but i appreciate any extra advice I want to be pest free. If I do use new rock, could, how would I do so without disrupting my balance of bacteria? If I put new rock in my display, I feel the need to replace the rock in the frag system as well. And the only way to be sure the snails, uh, no, there will be no more snails, would be to change all the rock at once. So my plan is to uh, change all frag plugs. I'm uh, fearful that I could crash my system. Not sure if it's worth it. Thanks, man. Okay. Um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to basically set up two different systems. So, yes, you need new rock in the main display. So you need to start curing that rock uh, about three to four months out before you start building the display tank, giving it time to build up the beneficial bacteria, just like I did on the one, uh, the 300. I almost said 125. For, on the 300, look at the 300-gallon uh, playlist and see how I cured that Pucani. But anyway, you want to cure the rock, uh, give it time to est be established. So... What you're going to do is you're going to not tie the systems together at first. You're going to um, set up the main display with a rock, get it established, uh, give it a couple months to kind of adjust and be ready for coral. That means uh, your nutrients where they should be, your keep it stable alkalinity, all that good stuff. And then what you're going to do is uh, take the corals and colonies that you have and you're going to remove them um, from... Uh, your low boy tank that means don't take the plugs you're either going to take a frag of a colony or the majority of the colony making sure there's no fermented snails on it you don't want to take any plugs you definitely don't want to take any of the rock from that system you don't want to take any power heads any heaters no nothing from that system and uh, if you don't have a coral quarantine tank which i don't think you're going to need uh, because the fermented snails don't actually live on the coral they live on the frag plugs or they live on the base of lps which is technically the coral but it's not the fleshy part of the coral and uh you're basically going to want to take frags from that system, transfer them over to the new display tank. Uh, of course, making sure you don't have any of the remnant snails on any of that stuff on the way over. And um, once that system is established, then you're going to slowly take down the low boy and then uh, disinfect and clean the low boy. I mean, let it run in fresh water, go in there, even with vinegar, clean every single thing that's in that tank, all the nooks and crannies, make sure there's no fermented snails. Let it stay full of fresh water and run for at least a few weeks. Drain it let it stay dry and then you can attach the systems together that's what i would do and um yeah that's the only way there's no way you're going to be able to add rock to um 
to another tank and you know make sure you you know you keep them separated they're still going to get into the display one way or another so uh yeah that's my answer hopefully it helps you out Okay, next question. Travis, I have a 120 gallon. I run a skimmer, refugium, and two radions. I lose every stick I buy. I do a 20 gallon water change on the main display tank. Um, you didn't say how often, but you said I do a 120 gallon water change, a MT mag. Magnesium is 1410, alkalinity 8.7, calcium 534, uh, NO3 0.04, PO4 0.08. I was told my, by my local store I'm doing too small of a water change and that that was keeping, uh, keeps causing what's your thoughts on the tank. It's been four years old and not been able to keep sticks. I'm also waiting on an ICP test to come and I want to get the tank right so I can order more frags from you to pick up. Okay. All right. So from the, if you just look at the water parameters and hopefully they're correct, uh, 1410 is fine for your magnesium. Alkalinity is fine. 8.7 calcium is a little high, but it's not a big deal. Um, I would like to know if you're dosing anything, are you dosing two par or anything like that? Cause I mean, the calcium is a little high. It could just be your salt, more, but sounds like you're just doing water changes in the salt. But anyway, um, your NO3 is 0 0.04, which is pretty low. It's definitely pretty low. Uh, I'm guessing that that's not... I don't know what you're testing to get that. I mean, what are you testing NO3? What, what, what are you using to test to get 0 0.04? Because even on that Red Sea NO3 or nitrate test kit, you're not getting those 0.0, .0 percentages. You're getting like... You know, I think it's 0.5. Uh, you get uh, one, two, three, stuff like that. But uh, I don't know how you got 0.04. So that might be a typo. I'm assuming that it, if you, know, you said it right, but um, your NO3 is low. Your PO4 is okay. I recommend 0 0.07 to 0 0.15. Consider bringing that up a little bit. You're just right on the verge of being too low. Um, but uh, right now, it sounds like if that's correct and it's not for NO3, if it's zero, if it's below a point. Uh, one ppm of NO3, then your NO3 is too low. Um, that could definitely be the reason why your um, corals are not happy. Uh, there's other factors involved. Uh, I mean, the ICP test is going to give you a good indication on what else is going on with the tank. Maybe you got some screws in the sump or, you know, something's going on where you're, you're leaching into the tank. But uh, you didn't say if you had any other corals in there that are doing well or not. Because, um, you know, if, if, say, a bunch of LPS are doing well, your, your soft corals are doing well, and you're just struggling with a few SPS here and there, um, you know, it could be something minor. But from the sound of it, it looks like your nitrates are a little low and your water changes. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why they told you to keep doing water changes. Uh, it says it says the local store says I'm doing too small of water changes. Um, I don't know how that's even possible since your nutrients are already low. So, um, yeah, I, that's just the local fish store for you, I guess. But I would increase your nitrates if it is literally literally under 1 ppm, then you might want to increase those. That's going to help. And uh, get the ICP test, and feel free to email me again. Um, we can do a follow-up question, answer, whatever, in another video. But give me more information and just put, like, follow-up and just kind of paste this information in there so I know what we're talking about. All right, so uh, I don't really answer the question too much because I need some more information. But, uh, yeah, we're going to move on to the next one. Hope all is well with you and your family through all of this crazy stuff going on. How high off the water line do you have your lights on your low boy system? Um, I think I think I answered this on the live stream. <laughs> yeah, because I was talking about standing on there and using appendages appendages to measure the light distance, which was stupid, but it was one of those days. Uh, let me see. Um, it's uh, shit. I don't know. It's probably like 15 inches something like that off the uh, water line and basically I just I only have them to a certain height just so I can make sure the lights overlapping correctly and that there's not a lot of splash over that's what I look for in the low boys if you're gonna put lights over them and and all the lights splashing over the rim of the tank and, and basically meaning that the lights going on the floor instead of in the tank that means you got to lower the lights a little bit so that's kind of what I just focused on and uh, I do have a little look at, have a tad bit of splash over but nothing crazy and um, yeah just do that Next question. My female clown has a white spot on its gill. Uh, it's been four days. I don't see any more spots. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, if it's got one spot, there might be other spots coming. Uh, you didn't say if it was in the main display or not. I'm assuming it is because you didn't say it was in quarantine. Most people say when they see the spots, uh, you're usually talking about the fish in their main display tank. Um, if it was my fish, um, you didn't say if you had any other fish or anything like that going on. Just kind of a real quick question. So I'm assuming things. Uh, so I'm going to assume it's the only fish you have, and it's in your main display, ta main display tank, um, and it has one spot. Uh, what I would do is I would 
set up a quarantine tank if you can, and I would remove the fish and put it in quarantine and do preventative treatment for ick, and let that tank go fallow, your display tank go fallow for 10 weeks. And I only say this because nobody ever stops at one fish. You're going to want to add more fish. You're going to want to add things to the tank. And uh, you don't want to be adding them to a tank that potentially has ick in it because they're going to get sick. They might die. You're going to waste your money. It's going to be stressful. It's going to be annoying. And it's never going to get better. So you're better off just taking the fish off, putting put fish out, putting it in quarantine, preventative treatment with copper for two weeks, and then two weeks of observation. And then, uh, well, you're going to have to go longer than that because you got to wait 10 weeks for the main display tank. So keeping the fish in uh quarantine for 10 weeks granted don't do copper the whole time just two weeks of copper then observe for the rest of the time and uh you know just wait it out and then put the fish back in and you know just quarantine every fish from this point forward okay moving on to our last question for today's video hi travis i recently set up my first tank bare bottom the cycle is over everything is fine except one thing the salt the salt i'm using has a dkh of eight when i set up the tank i started with eight but after a month of cycling it went to 11. that means that the rock real reef is adding alkalinity into the water after a few consecutive 25 percent water changes i brought it back down to eight but when I measured again a week later, it went up to nine, which means uh, was up to nine, which means the rock is adding an entire degree of DKH every single week. I did a 25% water change, brought it back to eight, and the next week the same thing. Now the problem is I intend to maintain a small, mostly soft, maybe some LPS2 tank with a weekly water change, uh, weekly 25% water changes because that is a good way to go with a nano tank with easy, non-demanding corals. But if every week the rock raises the alkalinity by a whole degree and then it drops instantly back a whole degree again because of the water change, won't that out won't that kill my first frags instantly? Question mark. Uh, isn't such a big and quick swing in alkalinity lethal, or is that within acceptable levels and it will be fine? Question mark. Any ideas how I can solve this? Thank you. All right, so. When it comes to uh, the alkalinity, um, I mean, it, that really sucks. I mean, that rock is putting that much in there. Maybe consider taking some of the rock out and doing a little bit less. Uh, that will cut down on how much gets dumped in there. But one thing you got to understand is once the, once the tank is established and you're growing coralline algae, that's really going to use up a, quite a bit of the uh, the alkalinity within the water. You might even find later on when you have a bunch of LPS in there and you have a ton of coralline algae, you might even have to dose or increase your water changes to keep up with the demand of alkalinity. So I wouldn't re really worry too, too much at the moment um, if you want to just kind of slow things down again again you can remove some of the rock and even have it so you can add it later if you if you find that you need more rock it just depends on what you want to do um, but uh, i really wouldn't worry about that one dkh swing especially with soft corals they're not really going to matter they might close up a little bit but then they're not going to really be negatively affected lps uh, it depends. It depends on what you have. If you get a really sensitive frog spawn or something, they might not like it. But I highly doubt that that's going to kill anything. Um, now, if you had it full of SPS, yeah, you might have a problem. But I really wouldn't worry too much about that. It's pretty acceptable. It is really within the acceptable range when it comes to those types of corals. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I, I mean, you could even consider doing, uh, you know, 10% water changes instead, depending on how much coral is growing and all that stuff. This is something you're going to have to balance out. I mean, there's so many different ways you can go about it. But, again, I really wouldn't worry too, too much about it. Uh, once the tank is completely, you know, you said it's already cycled, get some snails with some coralline algae, try to get that stuff growing and see how it balances out. Um, but I do recommend at least testing your alkalinity uh, twice a week to keep an eye on it. Um, but again, soft corals and LPS, that might be a little overkill. It just depends on how comfortable you feel. Uh, if it was my tank, I would dose, I would test it uh, once a week just to keep an eye on it. And if anything, you know, gets out of control, then of course, you know, you remove the rock. You could uh, always do less water changes more frequently, you know, just to cut down on the swing. There's many things you can do, but uh, you should be good either way. Anyway, that's about it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it and found it to be somewhat entertaining. If you like this content, make sure you hit the thumbs up and feel free to subscribe. I try to get content out every single day for you guys. Believe it or not, I really do. I, I get up in the morning, I go, man, what kind of what kind of video am I going to make for these jokers today? You know, I got to entertain the masses. And uh, no, I'm just kidding. I really do try to get content out every every single day for you guys. Something, either a Q&A or an instructional video or me rambling or, you know, even the podcast. Something just trying to keep you guys going especially during this time and everybody is pretty bored as well so uh anyway that's about it if you have any questions let me know you can definitely send them to fishofhex at gmail.com and i will get to your question as soon as i can all right so until next time i'll see you guys later peace